One of my goals for this past winter was to try to get every room and closet in our home decluttered and intentionally organized. So today I want to share with you the culmination of those efforts and a tour of our small home organized for our family of six. All right, so starting here in our entryway, when you first come into our home, our main bit of organization is this double door closet. And in here, of course, we keep things like coats, hats, gloves, shoes for my husband, and games, preschool things, Play-Doh, all sorts of things like that. So this is a great main place for us to store a lot of daily use items. So when we get any mail, bills, things like that, I really try to deal with it as soon as possible. If we have any papers that we wanna keep, we either put them up here or back here in this filing system of sorts. Otherwise, we really try to go paperless with as much as possible. We don't have a lot of paperwork that we hold on to. We don't hold on to statements and things like that. We really try to access all of that online and that really cuts down on any kind of paper clutter or you know school paperwork that comes into the house, which I can also talk more about when I show you our basement. And then down here on the floor, I have a basket for my kids' shoes. So that's where they come in and they just throw it all in there, really easy. We have a dresser here that sort of divides the entryway to our living room. And this provides a ton of storage for us, which is a great option for a small space. So in the top, we keep things like Bible study notebooks and devotionals. We have some art and craft supplies in here as well. In the middle, we have a sewing kit and some vacuum accessories and just kind of a random mix of things. And then at the very bottom, these are actually cushions for some outdoor seating that we have in the front of our house. So I only really access that in the spring and summer. And then the top here, we have our Bibles and Bible study notebooks. And my husband will sometimes throw his wallet and keys. And then when you move over, you're basically in our living room. So in this space, the main bit of organization that we have is this wall of built-ins. And if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you may know that these started out as three freestanding bookshelves that we got for free on Facebook Marketplace. They were not attractive in any way. And my amazing husband helped me to DIY them. I mean, he did a lot of the work and we combined them, we raised them up, we added molding, we added the lighting, and now it is, again, the main way that we organize things in our living room. So you can see we have these three baskets up here. My husband holds some random things in there. I have computer and camera supplies, and then we have some kids' craft supplies up there. And then we do store all of their library books or other books that they are currently reading. We have books kind of all over, but that's a great place to put them. And then we have a basket at the bottom for blankets. And then moving over to this side, again, we have a basket for kids, art supplies, well, coloring books and things that are kind of more art related or projects that they've worked on. We'll just throw them in there until we decide if we're keeping them or not. We have construction paper and crayons and duct tape and some preschool things all there at the bottom as well. This computer also serves as kind of our TV in this room. We don't have a TV above our fireplace, but I also do all of my editing on this computer. So while I can pull up this chair that we have here and work at the desk, we can also pull it out and have it just be extra seating when we have guests over. And then we do have a basket down here on the floor and this is for our dog, Finn, who you may hear around the camera. We just throw in any of his toys and bones and things like that. So then when we leave the living room, you immediately enter our dining room. And in here, there, I wouldn't say there's a ton of organization. We really try to keep our tabletop as clear as possible because we do so much at this table. We eat our meals, we do Play-Doh, we do schooling, we do lots of things here. So when it is not in use, I pretty much like to keep it totally bare. But then we do have this small glass fronted cabinet in here and I like to store some decorative things, mostly every now and then I will use these china pieces. I'll use my tablecloths. Down here in this bin, I actually store playbills and play or any kind of like outing that we go to. I like to store those in there sort of as memory keeping. 
And then at the top, I just, this changes all the time. Sometimes it's candlesticks and plants or these little rocks that my daughter painted that are super cute. But again, this changes seasonally. At Christmas time, we put our gingerbread houses up here. In the summer, maybe it's something else, but I like to have some life here, definitely. So this is a good place for it. It gets a good amount of sunlight. One thing that might seem kind of odd that we keep in our dining room by our, our basement door is our laundry basket. We don't have laundry baskets or hampers in our kids' bedrooms or our bedroom. Everyone brings their laundry out from their room and we put it in one family basket. I'm constantly doing laundry, so having just one central one works for us. So then moving on from the dining room, this is the door out to our sunroom, which is kind of like our mud room, which I can show you. Through the dining room is what we call our sunroom. It's also the mud room. It's our dog's room, and I've shared it a few times recently. This is also how we get out to our back deck and our backyard. We have a door to the garage and then a door, an exterior door. We keep some boots in here. This is where we store our dog's dog food. And then there is a plastic container inside. So that's a little bit of organization. And then we keep all of his kind of paraphernalia in here. This desk, unfortunately, when he was a puppy, he chewed off the handles, but in this drawer, we keep things like extra dog bags. And then in the spring and summer, I do keep like seed packets and gardening gloves and shovels and things like that. This shelf up here is also what we call our nature wall. So we have collected all sorts of things around our house or when we go somewhere that is nature related, the whole thing really could use a good dusting and maybe reevaluating and clearing some space for things that are yet to be found. And then we have a door down to our basement where our kids are currently watching a movie. And then we're basically into the kitchen. And this place has come a long way. I'll show you what it used to look like but we're not really talking about design right now, we're talking about organization. So I can take you into the cabinets and kind of show you a brief overview of how we have things organized. So in this cabinet, we have coffee and tea, we have nuts and seeds and maple syrup, we have some extra drinking glasses, our mugs, which is a very small collection. In these two drawers next to the stove, we have utensils, extra measuring cups, things like that. Down here underneath, I have olive oils and vinegars, a cheese grater, and then our extra mixing and serving bowls. In this large drawer, this is actually a built-in bread box that came with our house. Our house is from the 1950s, and my husband's coworker, Powder, coated it for us. But inside here, we actually store potatoes, sweet potatoes, and onions. And I've done this for years. I know some people like to separate them, but it has always worked just fine for us. And then these two lowest drawers, we keep trivets and hot pads. And then this drawer at the bottom has always been for little random kid toys. So my kids play with them. You know, my youngest is only two and a half, but also when other kids come over, I can just open this drawer and they can freely play with anything in here. These two cabinets above the stove, this is our spice cabinet. We have salt and pepper. We have some extra overflow baskets at the top. I keep soy sauce and hot sauce and different things like that. Then we have this teeny tiny baby cabinet and in here I keep vanilla extract and other baking things and sort of baking spices, cinnamon, allspice, and ginger. There's some baking soda back there as well. In this cabinet, this is sort of glass food storage, lids, travel coffee cups, some random jars and things. Then we keep other jars in here, water bottles, and then some baking like chocolate chips and things like that. And then under our sink, we keep cleaning supplies as most people do. I recently updated our cleaning supplies to these beautiful amber glass jars with labels and I can link those if you're interested. But we just keep, again, paper towels, soap, dishwasher detergent, garbage bags, and these sort of SOS sponges. I just like to take things out of their packaging as much as I can to save on space. In this upper glass fronted cabinet, I have our china, which we use occasionally. I have a mixing bowl that I use all the time, and these bowls I use all the time. This is just sort of a secondary set of dishes. So definitely things that we use and I like having on display because they're all blue and white and very pretty. These two drawers are our junk drawer and sort of like our tool junk drawer. So in this side, 
when we don't have our iPad out, which basically it is always out because we're always playing some kind of music, but when we want to put it away, we can put it in here. This is also where I keep my planner and my meal planner or my grocery shopping list. But then underneath is all of the typical things, pencils, pens, markers, glue, scissors, you know, all that stuff that everyone needs and has to have a place for, and that is all in here. And then in this drawer, this is sort of like tools, home maintenance, charging cords, all different things like that. My kids' digital cameras that they like to play with, batteries, you know, that all kind of lives in here. And then this large cabinet down here, this is where we store large, or rather small appliances, but bigger small appliances. So our crock pot and Dutch oven, coffee grinder, only things that we truly use. I don't have anything in my kitchen that is only used once or twice or not at all. Everything is very purposeful and we use them all the time. So this pantry update was a recent project that I did actually just, just share a couple weeks ago, but my husband and I completely transformed this pantry. It used to be really, messy and disorganized and not the greatest organizational features but he custom built all of these drawers at the bottom they completely pull out the full length of the pantry closet which is only about 22 inches wide and about four feet deep so it really helps to maximize the depth that we have even though it is very narrow so the organization is so much better in here we don't store every single food item in our home in this pantry, but it definitely houses everything we need that we need on a daily or weekly basis. Just those quick necessity items that we keep in here with our microwave and extra vases and things like that at the top. And then lastly, for organization in the kitchen, of course I have to mention our island. So in here we keep our little cutting knives, and also our cloth napkins. This drawer is cutlery and some serving pieces. This drawer is plastic bags, plastic wrap, foil, things like that. And then this drawer on the end, we have our lemon squeezer, ice cream scoop, candles. It's just kind of a random assortment of things. But then above it, we do have an extra cutting board. It can come out all the way and then we can put it back and we just purposely put that cabinet there because we really liked the access of the extra cutting board. Then down in this cabinet, we have lunch boxes, lunch packing supplies, and reusable shopping bags. This top drawer is our daily dishes and kids drinking glasses, my son's sippy cups, and dish towels, and the mop replacement heads. And then the bottom drawer, this is the majority of our cooking pots and pans. So we have a big stock pot, we have a smaller one, an extra pan, and then some baking dishes. And that's basic, basically it. We have two cast iron pans that we do keep on the stove top. So these are our primary cooking utensils or cooking, you know, pans. Other than that, and my Dutch oven and my crock pot, everything else I cook with is here in this drawer. And then lastly, in this cabinet, we just have more cutting boards and baking pans, and then some extra Ziploc bags, parchment paper, and aluminum foil. It is definitely not this clean all the time. Please believe me, we make quite a mess here, but it all has somewhere to go back to, and it really doesn't take a lot of time to reset in the middle of the day or at the end of the day. Okay, so heading down the French door here down to our basement. This was another project that we completely tackled and renovated over a couple of years. Most recently we updated the stairs. I guess you could say this serves as some sort of organization. It's just extra artwork. Sometimes I swap things around, but also it, you know, adds a cute little touch there as well. So then when we head down the stairs, this is our finished basement and it's essentially the whole footprint of the upstairs of our home. And I'll take you into the back. We have our laundry and our bathroom, but I wanna show you this storage room first. So in our storage room, which I know I've showed before, but we have a lot of different things down here. It definitely helps a ton with organization. So we have things like seasonal decor, kids clothing. There's some things back here like snow gear and some memorabilia bins, things we want to save, Christmas trees, a guitar, so just a lot of different things. In this bin, I actually store school 
things, school memorabilia for each of my kids that are currently in school. And I really am very selective about what I hold on to. I only have a small section for each grade because I don't want to save every single thing they ever did because I think it's going to be overwhelming to look through later on down the road. I have four kids, so I really try to be very selective. I do have these cute little school day books for them to put their picture and their class picture. It really helps me to stay on top of that. We have our deep freezers. We have a little tool bench. We have all sorts of home repair things in the back. Again, more seasonal decor there. And then a little backup pantry. So coming out of the storage room, we have a little kind of crafting area down here. My son's drum set. This is a vintage armoire sort of hutch cabinet where that I actually got for free on Facebook Marketplace. And again, they just store all their crafting supplies and things there. And then another table, sometimes they'll pull it out and they'll sit around it. We have these cute little chairs over there that they can sit at. And then back here we have our family room, also kind of like gross motor play. So we have the trampoline and then this flipping gymnastics bar. Sometimes they like to flip onto the couch, sometimes it's out here. We have a balance beam, but this is also where we have our large TV, our only TV really. We just have the computer upstairs. So when they have, you know, friends over, family over, movie nights, stuff like that, we will come down here. And yeah, it's not super organized. It's not super styled right now, but we are so grateful to have that space. So then over here, we have our second full bathroom, although I guess maybe it's more like a three quarter bathroom. It just is a stall shower. So when we bought this house, it only had the sink and toilet and it was really not <laughs> very functional. So we added the shower and not ton of organization in here other than this little basket for extra toilet paper. And we do have a little shelf down there that used to be on the wall. It, I don't know, we're just deciding whether or not to keep it. But when guests come, this is their guest bathroom that they use and sometimes they'll use that shelf to hang things up. So then moving away from the bathroom, heading back towards going upstairs, this is our washer and dryer area. And these baskets at the top, we actually use those to store overflow household products. So you can see I have some things up here, like stain treatment and laundry detergent, but then I'll also hold on to extra baking soda, or which I use for cleaning, or Ziploc bags, or feminine products, just you know, different things that we want to stock up on, sometimes diapers and wipes I'll put up here, toilet paper, napkins, all, all that kind of household things that you need. So this is our linen closet. In here we keep our towels. Every towel that we own does fit in here. We have some in the laundry, we have some in the bathroom, but otherwise, when everything is clean and folded, it all fits here. And then I have these bins that I've organized and labeled for you can see sun and bug products, dental products, hair products, and then that white bin is for medications. And at the top we have soap and beauty, safety, and the very top white is for nail polish and things like that. And then off to the side I have a little hand soap refill, rubbing alcohol, and a little ceramic container that usually has band-aids in it, but we're running low. And then obviously we store our vacuums in here and overflow toilet paper, which we also keep in the bathroom. Like, so this is just extra bars of soap, you know, just the general linen closet type things. We don't keep bedding in here. We keep all that in each person's individual room. So at the very top of the closet, we did add an extra shelf, which is kind of hard to get to, but it definitely still provides at least another foot of storage space for us. So we just put some things up there that we don't use as often. So this is our main family bathroom. We do have another bathroom in our basement, which of course we use, but as far as getting ready and unready every day, this is the bathroom that everyone uses. So all of our toiletries and things need to fit in this vanity, in the drawers, and in the basket at the bottom. So in this basket, we just keep extra toilet paper, like I mentioned, I could definitely restock this, extra shampoos and garbage bags and just a couple other random things in there. And then in the top drawer, we have toothpaste and toothbrushes. I have my skincare things, my husband's things on the left side. 
We have tooth flossers and hair accessories there. And then the bottom drawer, again, more hair supplies. I have this really cute little vintage box. We keep nail clippers and tweezers in there. And again, more skincare. We have Q-tips in here. This is my entire earring collection that I share with my daughter. So we just keep it very minimal. And then extra hair care, mouthwash, and feminine supplies. So that's basically it for the bathroom. Obviously we keep shampoo and things in the shower, but let's move on to our bedroom. So for organization in our bedroom, the first thing I wanted to mention was this very small, narrow dresser. We purposely sought out, or I purposely sought out this specific dresser. I'm very familiar with this style, and I just needed something very narrow and very, you know, not so wide to fit in this little nook. And I really keep such a random assortment of things in here, but the primary thing I wanted it for was just to tuck away my kids' artwork and things that they write and pictures they draw. It is quite full, as you can see, and this is not even all of it, but it just really helps me when there's something that you know, I, I think it's really special. I don't want to throw it away. It's somewhere that I can quickly put it. It doesn't require any extra thought. They may not even know that I kept it. They may think that it's just gone, but I definitely do keep very special things or, you know, things that I deem to be special. But again, this is very random. Some memorabilia, some just practical storage or things that I just want to hide away from the kids. That's what I keep in here. And then we have our two bedroom closets. We have a his and a hers. I'm not gonna take you into Dan's, but you know, it's just a guy's closet. But over here, this is my bedroom closet. I know I've showed this plenty of times and I've showed it just recently, but this is my closet. It's maybe only about four feet or so wide, but I really have settled on a wardrobe that I love and I sort of do a capsule wardrobe every season or maybe twice a year or so and it fits everything perfectly. I'm constantly going through my wardrobe. I'm constantly going through my kids' wardrobes just so that we're only holding on to clothing items that we're actually using. At the top, I do have these two fabric Ikea bins and I store out of season clothes up there. So when the seasons switch, I can pull down things and sort of shop my own closet before I determine if I need to buy anything. So this basket down here, it might be hard to see, but this is a crucial part of keeping my home organized. This is my perpetual donation bin, which means that all throughout the week, all throughout the month, every day, if I come across something that we do not need in our home, I put it in my perpetual donation bin. And then when this fills up, I transfer it to some sort of box or bag and I get it out of the house. And it could be literally anything from the kitchen, from my kid's room, from the basement, it doesn't matter. But that is such a key to keeping our home organized is to be endlessly purging and really ruthlessly evaluating the items in our home. What do we need to keep and what are we not using? And if we are not using it, it is going in that bin and it's getting out of the house. And then in this alcove between our closets, we have this beautiful vintage dresser and my husband and I kind of share it. Well, we share the top drawer for undergarments and things. And then he actually has the rest of the three drawers for t-shirts and work clothing and, you know, just extra things like that. And then over on my bedside table, obviously I have a little more organization here for a lot of books, mostly. I have this basket down here that sometimes I will throw in things that I'm not really sure if I need or if I want. It's kind of like a holding place for me that is just a little bit cuter. Right now it's totally empty, but that is a good way to add some extra storage. And then on the shelf also I have this little basket that kind of acts as my drawer and that's where I keep my charging cables to charge my phone and I'm always in the middle of a book. I have some cute little clay things that my daughter's been making me and just a couple family photos. So moving over into our boys room, very simplified because truly the amount of toys that I keep in my kids rooms is the amount that they can reasonably manage and clean up. So my son does love to look at books in bed, but we really don't keep a ton of it in his room. Sometimes they'll stack up really high here and then we'll go and put them back on 
other bookshelves around the house. So day to day, really, he just has a little stool, a sound machine, and then whatever book that I'm currently reading aloud to him. And then we do store toys underneath the crib. So we have these clear bins. They are low and they go back a good amount, pretty much the whole depth of the crib. So magnetiles and trains, that is really what he loves to play with. And when all of this is taken out, it fills the whole room, it makes a big mess, but it's really only two things to clean up. It either goes in this bin or that bin. So it's very easy for him and for my five-year-old as well. And then in their closet, all we have in here are Lego Duplos, which again, it is a lot of pieces and it makes kind of a mess when they have it all poured out on the floor, but it's only one thing. It's only one type of toy. It all goes back in the same container. There's really no sorting. And then they just have a basket and it's kind of overflowing, but that is like dress up clothes, which they just love. That's one of their favorite things to do. And then a couple random things. And then this black thing here, they actually have so much extra space in their closet that we store. This is a tri-fold full bed mattress that we use in our basement when we have guests. They didn't have a lot in here, so it was a perfect place to do it, to store it. Then they just have a humidifier and a little um, sleeping bag. And then at the top, I keep diapers and wipes. That laundry basket is for clothes that either of them outgrow. So if my older one outgrows it, I'll save it for his brother. And then when my younger son outgrows it, I save it for my nephew. And then that white box is for memorabilia. And then there's a couple different decor things that have been up in this room at various times, but not currently being used. Moving over to their dresser, they share this. So my five-year-old gets these three and my two and a half-year-old gets the right side. I've had this same dresser in the nursery for all four of my kids. So that's the top drawer. Middle drawer is pretty much his entire wardrobe for my two and a half year old. They also do help put away their laundry, so it's not super neat, but they are very helpful that way. So PJs, pants or shorts in the summer, short and long sleeve shirts, and then a couple sweatshirts and socks there. Bottom drawer is basically empty. I have an extra crib sheet and an extra pair of pants that will probably get donated to be honest and nothing in there. My five-year-old, since the top drawer was basically empty for him, he just stores all his, you know, personal items. Middle drawer is the bulk of his wardrobe. Pants on this side, shirts on this side. Again, I fold their laundry and they put it away. They also help fold sometimes too, which is, you know, funny, but he's just learning and doing his best. And then bottom drawer, socks, undies, and pajamas. So that's their room. Again, makes it really easy for them to clean up. There's nothing under my son's bed. It, when I say come and clean up your room or please go tidy your room, it's really not a fight because it's very manageable for them. Next we are in my daughter's shared bedroom. So initially when we bought our house, this was my husband and my bedroom. But when we wound up having our third child, we swapped bedrooms and we gave our girls the bigger room because they had you know, bigger twin beds to share in here. So as far as organization, we do have this lovely vintage bookshelf and they are avid readers. So we have lots of books here. These are double stacked books. And we, again, are continually purging and thinning out books that they are not reading or not so into just to keep up with the ones that are coming in. This basket at the bottom is where they will throw any projects they're working on or crafts or things. And this will definitely fill up completely. And we recently just went through it and got rid of things. Sometimes it just takes them a little while to determine what they want to keep and what they don't want to keep. And then they do have this armoire in here and in this cabinet area, they keep sort of crafting things, yarn, craft kits, just books. I mean, it's a little bit messy, but you know, that's what they do. They each have a shelf and then they share the top one. And then they do, my older daughter does keep some clothes here in these drawers. And then they have this cute little dresser between their beds. And again, they kind of share it. They each have one side of the top. In the middle, we have even more books. Something else we did underneath my daughter's bed, which we used to have on both sides, but it wound up being too much organization. It wound up being too much storage for them. They were accumulating a lot of things, but we have underneath my daughter's bed, a box spring and it is turned upside down and covered with a fitted sheet. And this provides more storage for them that fills the entire 
size of a twin size bed. So they keep a lot of books down here. Did I mention they like books? So lots of comic books and animal books, drawing books, and then my daughter threw her bag down there. So it's a little disorganized and we go through it every now and then to reorganize it and to get rid of things that they are not using. And then they do have this large closet in their room and they each share a side or they each have a side. So each of them have one of these three drawer Sterilite bins where they put their clothing items and then this hanging organizer that is bursting full is where they store stuffed animals. So our rule or what we've landed on over the years is that they can have as many as will fit in here and you can see they really take advantage of the space and cram it full because they can only have as many as fit. So if they get a new one, they have to determine themselves which one is gonna go or how they're going to make space. And then at the top we have extra crafting things and art supplies. It might be hard to see, but there is a basket here and I have some shoes. So in there I will throw things that my older daughter outgrows that I can save for her sister. And then on this side is my younger daughter's closet. Again, the same thing, the Sterilite bin at the bottom and then stuffed animals. She also uses some of the bottom shelves for clothing. And then at the top, you can see again that basket with the clothes that will be passed down. And then some scribble scrubby, which is a little art thing that they like to do. And her calico critter accessories and house. They have a tea set and I think that basket is empty. And honestly, now that we have four children and they are 10 and a half, almost eight, five and two and a half, I can honestly say, and I think Dan would agree, we have less toys now than when we only had one child because as they've grown up you know their change their interests change and they have each other to play with so we've really pared down toys over the years to only the things that they really love to use and that they are using consistently because they love again to read and play outside and play with each other and your sibling is you know your best Plaything. So we've really minimized the toys that we have to store and that they have to clean up, which is a huge perk because when we want them to clean their room now, it's really not a fight like it used to be because they have a lot less and of course they're getting older as well. So they are taking more pride of ownership in the things that they have. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I make a new video every Thursday on living a beautiful life at home. Take care.